Welcome everybody to this expert talk episode. On this episode, I would like to dive into a particularly sensitive topic, especially for men. It's something that we don't like to think about. I'm going to place myself in that category as well. We don't like to even discuss with friends or family members until the worst happens. And what is it? It's testicular as well as prostate cancer. Next to me as always, Anna Marie Mayer. And on today's episode, the expert urologist, Dr. Chris Evans. Welcome to our show. So thank you for allowing us um, your precious time to have a discussion around the, the disease. Um, there's a lot of uneducated men out there, including myself. I'm very fearful to even think about it, but I know as well that having knowledge um, opens the door to the process. So I want to start with that. How do you think about prostate and testicular cancer? Do I need to go and get examined in my 30s, 20s? Do I wait until I'm in my 60s? You know, what's the best advice that you can provide us? Yeah. Thank you so much to you and Anne-Marie and the team at Midmac Motors for hosting me. Um, I think it's a very important topic and it's great that we have um, channels like this that can raise awareness. Um, we really do need to discuss this as two separate entities. In terms of the in prostate cancer specifically, it is a common cancer amongst men and it ranks internationally in the top one or two causes of cancer-related death. Wow. Jeez. So, I did not know yeah. that. So, but that's where us urologists will give that information. It's still important to bear in mind that there are other reasons or other things that impact your health. But you can see that it is a disease that is potentially dangerous. And that's why we don't want to let it go unnoticed and, and um, just ignore it. So there really are two different scenarios in which we are going to be picking up prostate cancer. The first one is screening. And screening is, by definition, trying to look for a disease that is common and that has an impact on your health so that we can pick it up at an early stage and potentially treat it and prevent either advanced disease or even death from the disease. The second uh, scenario that you would pick up prostate cancer is if you have symptoms like you mentioned earlier. And there really, again, are two different ways you could have symptoms. Either you are unlucky that you now have prostate cancer that has spread, usually it's to the bones and you'll have bone pain, um, usually weakness, um, general malaise. Um, or alternatively, the prostate does sit below the bladder and can cause, if it enlarges, can cause uh, problems passing urine. It's important to stress, though, that if you're struggling to pass urine as you're getting older, um, it's not necessarily cancer, so please don't think the worst in every situation, but I think it's important that if you are experiencing symptoms to be evaluated by your GP and if they feel it's necessary, definitely to seek the advice of a urologist. You've, you've mentioned something, um, body pain. Now, would one of the first symptoms be pulsing urine or is it back pain? Because I've read something about the back pain thing. Um, if you get to that point where you've already got lower back pain, um, pain on the hips, on the upper legs, is that already a symptom that it can be quite dangerously advanced question, maybe? Yeah. Maybe it's Because that quite is something now that you've mentioned it, what, what would be the, because sometimes people, I can just think, because it's so difficult subject that people might, okay, I've got a, a difficulty passing urine or up all night, so I'd rather keep quiet about it. But by the time I'm really sore, now I need to get to a doctor and I actually hope it's rather my back than anything else. Yeah. Or isn't it, it really related? So I think every case will be, uh, you have to assess every Unique. case as they come. It might be that your pain is related to an infection in the bladder or, or something like that. But definitely lower back pain 
can be a symptom of, of cancer that is spread. Um, but the common causes are actually muscle-related degenerative spinal disease. So there are a, a, a few causes that could potentially lead to you experiencing back pain. So again, uh, it's don't think the worst, but if you do have a new symptom, get it checked out. And mm -hmm. especially in that situation, doing a blood test, doing an x-ray or a, a special scan might get us closer to what's going on. So important if you've got symptoms. Um, I think just to go back, you said at what age should we start checking or, and that will bring us to the second part, which is screening. Now, this is actually a bit of a tricky area because on the one hand, we know that if we screen for prostate cancer, if we look closely for prostate cancer, um, that we actually do decrease your chance of dying from prostate cancer. But on the other hand, prostate cancer, uh, firstly screening, doing the tests, getting a diagnosis, treating, that in itself can cause problems with both sexual function and urological function down the line. So we really need That's to... That's a tricky one. You know, yeah. We really need to be honest with our patients. And there are things that, I mean, this has really advanced in the last five years or so, is that we need to pick up aggressive disease in young patients. So it's important if you have a family history of prostate cancer, especially under the age of 65, best to actually get it checked out. Um, and then uh, we know that if you're a black South African, the guidelines also recommend screening from a younger age because there does seem to be a genetic um, predisposition. Um, the guidelines recommend, the South African prostate guidelines recommend screening from 45 if you don't have a risk and 40 if you do have a risk, whereas the European guidelines start off about 50 and 45. So they differ by about five years. Um, and the important thing is that we need to try to find aggressive cancers in young men. That's where we're going to make the biggest difference and actually impact your life. And the important thing is that you need to at least have a life expectancy of around about 10 years. So if you've had a heart attack recently, you've got other uh, health issues, the chance that I'm going to make you live longer by picking up a prostate cancer and treating it okay. is pretty low. So that's where I know I started off by saying it's, a, it's probably the most common cause of cancer-related death in men. But really, looking after your heart health, your general health is more important than this, but it's definitely not something that should be ignored. Can we talk about, I would love to tell the viewers about the screening process, because I think yes. we talk about the symptoms, but I've got men in my life, and I want to protect them, because I know what they like. I live with men daily, and this is something that I don't speak about. I would honestly stand up and say, um, I'm sick, or I'm at that age, or I need this now. But I grow up with men. But the men around me, I want to rather educate them on what is the screening process like? Is it difficult? Is it uncomfortable? What can go wrong? What can't? Or is it maybe just a quick sonar? I don't know. And I think that is something That's that a we great need question. to share with the viewers. No, definitely. Excellent question. So there really are, at the baseline level, two things that need to be done. Well, Three, it always starts with a good history, finding your risk, yeah. um, what are your concerns, and making sure we also manage your expectations and what you want to um, have educating you appropriately. But really, when it comes to deciding your risk profile, there are two things that we have to do. The one is a blood test, the PSA. The PSA is a, we, it's a sensitive test. What does that mean is if we see that it's elevated, there's a good chance there's something going on in the prostate, but it's not specific. It could be age-related. It does increase as you get older. It can be the volume of the prostate. Again, as you age, the volume of the prostate usually increases. It doesn't necessarily mean it's cancer. It can also be elevated if you've had an infection in the prostate. Inflammation, a recent scope or instrumentation can also impact it. So PSA by itself 
uh, we always need to look at the history and the symptoms and signs. Um, but that is what we use as a baseline investigation. And again, drawing on the European data, if your PSA at 40 is less than one, your risk is very low. And at the age of 60, if it's less than two, you've also got a very low risk. And probably checking then every five years is, is, is adequate enough. The second part, and this is probably why most men try to stay away from a urologist, is because of the stigma and the fear of the prostate examination. Now, the fantastic thing about South African doctors is we really are trained to be good clinicians. That means taking a good history and doing a good examination. And there is a lot that uh, doing a prostate examination tells us. Firstly, exactly what a prostate exam is, is we do have to do a digital rectal exam. So the prostate lies on the, the anterior, that means the front aspect of the rectum, so we can access the prostate very readily through the rectum. It is an internal examination. It is something that will need informed consent. I can, as a doctor, never do an examination like that without discussing the benefit and getting your permission before we go ahead. But just to give a few of the benefits is that if you feel a nodule, that is usually associated with a high-grade or clinically significant prostate cancer. So better to actually evaluate it properly. We can determine the prostate size. Sometimes we can feel if a, a patient is very sensitive and tender, it might be the, a sign that he's got a infection in the prostate. So really it, it tells us a lot more than, than what we get with the blood test. So really, they've shown that a combination of the PSA and the digital rectal exam, that is the best way to evaluate the prostate. Certainly, it's going to be a discussion and every patient will need to be counseled. But that is the, the crux of screening, is, is trying to determine your risk like that. And then from that, there will either be two courses. One will be to recommend a multi-parametric MRI scan. That is really changing the landscape because an MRI can pick up clinically significant prostate cancer a lot better than just a random biopsy. And that's what we want to find out. It's this concept of clinically significant cancers because those are the ones, if we treat, we can make you live longer. But an MRI is the same thing that I've got in mind. You're going into the tube and it's a session and you're moving out. So it's not difficult for a patient going through that, actually. Because I think that is the extent. And I can just imagine, I know you guys, well, not you, but I know you well enough. I know my husband, I know my children. And it's the discomfort. So MRI, so the worst discomfort so far is the, fa the fact that they need to do a sonar via the rectum. Well, it's a finger exam via the rectum, yeah. Finger yeah. exam, so that's even worse. But that's the worst that can go. So I've got a question on that, right, right there. If you do the blood test yes. and it's not elevated, yeah. you mentioned a reading uh, yeah. of less than one under under the age of forty, yes, and less than two under the age of sixty. Yeah. I, I'm just thinking out loud, like a man, because yeah. I've never gone for 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 an exam like this. I go, you draw blood, do the blood test, do the examination. Let's say it's less than one. That's where it stops. We carry on with life. Yeah. You will only go to step two and step three if it's elevated. Is that a valid question? It is a valid question. Um, again, it depends if you've got symptoms or not. If, you, okay. if you're asymptomatic and I don't need to really think about a differential diagnosis, there is... And maybe not uh, family history. Yes. Yeah. 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 But I'm, I'm 40. Yeah. Let's no go. Let's go. Yeah. I'm 40. It's if, time. In all honesty, if your PSA <laughs> is less than one and you're younger than 40, the chance that you're going to add any value with a prostate examination is is very low. Okay. So they do say if you have to choose one exam, the PSA is probably the better one, but it's going to be a discussion with your, your urologist. And okay. definitely if your PSA is over two, it really, you're, you should have a, a, a prostate examination done. Done. Got you. Because that's the same reason yeah. that I mentioned the other day, why women stay away. 
um, and then don't do examinations on the half that we need to do. We've been in discussion with that. And that's the same way and the same reason why men stay away. They yeah. don't know what's expected. Yeah. They don't know if the, they walk into you immediately emotional when you walk in. Okay, first of all, why am I here? Am I just here like a normal routine checkup? No, I'm not here because I'm worried about something. People don't go for routine yeah. checkups. We all know that. Yeah. And even after the age of 45 and 50, they still tend to only rock up there when there's something wrong. Yeah. Am I right in saying that? Or do you get a higher percentage of patients that actually come for their checkup? Normal. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good mix. And it's, every person is different. Um, we, we've got uh, patients who have friends who've had prostate cancer and then they've walked the journey. They're a lot more aware, so they want to take that responsibility or a family member, in which case they've known and seen what can happen firsthand in the path. So th then they are more likely to, to be on board with screening. Um, you do also get patients, and that's where we also need to be honest. And I think this is also one of the interesting things that happened is um, in 2012, the, the US, the United States Preventative Task Force, they guide the GPs on what to do. They took away the recommendation to screen for prostate cancer. Really? And then what they noticed is over the next five years, the the number of people with advanced cancer and cancer Good. that had spread went up. Now, it's, you can never, you can only say there's an association. You can't say there's proof because you're not the way the study is designed. But based on that in 2017, and this is the crux, they said every man should be screened provided they are adequately counseled about the pros and cons. And I think that's the important thing. You talk to your patients nicely, tell them what the benefit is, tell them what the, the, the repercussions would be. But I think often that's where we fall short is we're busy, we want to just in our minds determine what the risk is. We need to engage with patients and, uh, and, and address their concerns and expectations. I think out of this session what I would want to see is that first of all we need to get the men out there to you yes. so that you can run this through. And not only wait until you've got symptoms, especially if you're after a certain age. And if you've got a family history, we're going through um, something similar in our family currently. And um, it's quite a big thing. Um, and everyone, no one wants to say anything and, and everyone wants to know. Yes. And that is important just to get the people there. I think, and I don't know if you agree with me, but you go to your GP and once you're after a certain age... I think it's go for a screening because then you will tell that person, okay, I only need to see you in five years. Yeah. You're hundred percent. Or you know what? I think I need to see you in two years. Am I right in yeah, saying no, that? Definitely. I think that's, it's always better to know than not to know. I know we are concerned, but definitely. I think but to know possible. you can sort it out. Yes. yes. If you don't know, you might go through a living hell. Yeah. And, and I want to, I want to dive into, you are proactive, boom, you go, elevated test, you do the exam, you pick it up early. What does treatment look like when you pick it up early versus what treatment looks like when you pick it up very late? You know, the, the benefits yeah. of picking it up early. That's an excellent question. So um, the, let's first start with the treatment. So there, there is not a standardized treatment. There are a couple of different treatment mm -hmm. options we can give you. The first that we need to discuss is what we call active surveillance. Now, active surveillance means I've picked up a cancer that doesn't look like a dangerous cancer. Okay. It's not going, it, I don't think based on the blood results, my assessment with my finger, the histology, I don't think this cancer is going to kill you. But you're young. If this cancer changes, grows, or is something, maybe this wasn't representative, and I can still cure you from cancer, that I at least don't miss you. Yeah. So that means that we will then put you into our clinics. You will be seen every three months. We will repeat the biopsy within a year to 18 months just to make sure we haven't missed something dangerous. And it's important. We've basically got 
three groups of cancers. It's the low risk, the intermediate, and the high risk. For the low-risk cancers, that really is the standard, so that we don't over-treat. Okay. Then when it comes to the other two groups, it is going to be individualized, but they're basically three big groups or categories of treatment. The first is surgery. We used to do it with open surgery, um, which really has advanced and our understanding of the anatomy has improved the complication rates have improved a lot and one of the big things that has improved is that there's now robotic surgery available and we're fortunate to have the urology hospital here in Pretoria they've got uh, a number of very well-trained robotic surgeons who do offer a robotic radical prostatectomy it's still important to know that it's just because it's a robot, it doesn't mean that there's no it's risk. Still it's still, risk. It, it's it's still is perfect, a yeah. uh, operation, but at least the recovery is quicker. Um, your stay in hospital is quicker. Your risk of losing blood and needing transfusions is lower. So robotic surgery is really changing the landscape in terms of surgery. And it's probably the technology is only probably going to improve and get yes, better. Sir. Uh, they've even in Europe they're starting to map the MRI to your robot surgery, so your anatomical wow. detail and understanding is improving. It really, it really is getting better. Then there is radiation, and radiation there are two different types that we can use: either external beam. Again, uh, we're fortunate to be living in this day and age that radiation techniques have improved a lot. We can focus right on the prostate a lot better and the damage to surrounding organs is less and then the last category is what we call brachytherapy um, which is where we implant seeds into the prostate again deciding on these treatments needs to be individualized each will have their own set of uh, risks and there are certain cancers that you can't give brachytherapy for there are certain cancers that you you or Men, if they're really struggling with urination, they've got a big prostate that you might have to decide on another technique. So it is an individualized uh, decision, um, but there are a number of ways to treat it, yes. Okay, got you. Testicular cancer, is it, is it also a high-ranking cancer or is it something that happens to one in every couple of hundred thousand or a million people? And what are the age groups highest at, at, at risk? Because I believe from the little bit of research that we've done, it's different. So it's, it's more towards a younger generation that testicular cancer occurs. Am I correct, correct to say so? So uh, this is also where, when I was studying, it always confused me a bit. But from what we know, in the age group of 20 to 40... Young men. Yeah, it's the most common solid organ tumor or um, <clears throat> so apart from your leukemias and skin cancers and things like that it is right up there as one of the most common cancers but in that age group cancer is very rare so you're looking at around about five and a hundred thousand depending the scandinavian countries have a slightly higher incidence than most uh, countries um, but we do know that the worldwide risk of testicular cancer is going up um, it's not something to be uh, consumed by and it's not that I'm going to recommend every man or young man goes out and feels their testes when they're done watching this video. But it's important to pay attention. If you do feel a lump or bump or you've got pain and you feel that there's something changing in the scrotum, definitely go have it checked out. Yeah. Make sure that there's nothing that's, uh, yeah. that's alarming. And then there are certain risk groups where we do recommend that you do need to do self-evaluations every three months. And those include patients who've got a family history, either a brother or a father who had testes cancer. If you have a condition called undescended testes, where the testes hasn't made its path to the scrotum, it's still stuck in the inguinal canal or abdomen. And then the last group is if you've had a personal history of, of testes cancer. Those are the patients that really do need to pay close attention and make sure they, they monitor themselves. 
and uh, usually we will talk to them because they will have their path will have crossed a urologist along the way. Awesome. I think very informative. You know, my, my key takeaways are um, what I'm going to take away from this is is you know at 40, uh, this is what I'll do. I'll go. I'll do the blood test. If there's anything that's irregular, uh, you know, then proceed to step two. Um, if if it's under one, then we're good and and have it checked out every five years afterwards. Um, you know, the testicular cancer. Obviously, you can you 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 will feel because you've lived in your body your entire life. You'll feel if there's a a, a tumor or something that's developed that's that's not supposed to be there, and and go and check it out rather rather than waiting. Um, like you mentioned, for the pain in your hips and 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 until it's it's never too late, I suppose. With beautiful innovation in medicine, there's always something that the doctor can do. But um, you know, if you pick it up nice and early, perhaps your uh, process is going to be an easier one, and and it's it, the the level of success, in my opinion, will be higher if you pick it up early. Yeah, you uh, make a very important point. Yeah. The earlier we pick up disease generally the the better the outcomes i think my take up will be the fact that you know your body yeah if there's a change in your body rather seek help and don't just sit back if something is carrying on for over a month there's a reason why they put you on flu medicine for a week and not longer yeah if something's not cured within a month that would be my take out i think just seek help um maybe it's not bad but rather know it's easier treated, and don't don't be paranoid. Yeah, still live um, your life. Live your life. Yeah. Live your life, and don't be paranoid, but but seek help, and yeah. especially if there's a change in your body. Yeah, as a as a man, pay attention to your general health, and and a big part of that is just at least understanding and knowing what what needs to be done. So. Congratulations also to you for this session because it really helps us as the urologists to get the word out there. Thank you very much. And Thank doctor, you so much. You really have left us better than you found us. Thank you very much. Our audience thanks you. And um, we're going to put all your contact details with a link uh, to the website where um, you know, some, of our, some of our audience can seek help and, and make an appointment. And um, yeah, just... Uh, you know, general inquiries, any more information, I'm sure is going to be found on your website. Thank you for uh, spending the time with us. We really appreciate it. And, you know, through your efforts, we're definitely uh, going to number one prevent and uh, help people. That's why we're here. Awesome. Thank definitely. Thank you very much. Take care, guys, and have a beautiful day. Hope we leave you better than we found you today. Thank you. Take care and have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Goodbye.